we were very excited when we uh, received approval of Stromvelis in Europe and in order to celebrate we had an amazing time uh, speaking to everyone within the company and we, we uh, put out an announcement throughout the intranet uh, and had a get-together of people to announce what we've done and a lot of the hard work that we'd gone through it was amazing because there was so much hard work that had gone in but seeing the people's reaction and how many people were so proud of all of the work that had been done and I think it's really important to remember that Stromvelis to treat ADA skid is really the first uh, gene therapy that's a corrective gene therapy used and approved for children and so children with ADA skid are born without the ability to fight infection so they have no real immune system and these patients very often die before the age of two. We have to be very thankful also to our collaborators at the Telethon Institute of Gene Therapy with whom we worked. So as you can imagine, uh, being the very first corrective gene therapy for children to ever be approved, um, we're really blazing the way uh, in this area. And so there's an enormous amount of things that we still have to do. Um, the first and foremost is now that we have the approval is we need to make sure that it's available to children throughout the European Union where we have an approval and so being able to work with payers and regulators in the different countries is absolutely critical. Following that, um, it's also important to remember this is a global disease and as such we are making steps towards making this therapy available to a variety of different children throughout the world. It's important um, that Approximately 350 patients at any one time are affected by um, ADA skid um, throughout the world and so our aim now is to make sure that we're able to treat these patients much closer to home and have a way that we can get the therapy out to them in order that they are able to be treated. And I think the last thing that we really are focusing on now is not so much around the treatment of ADA skid but the, the diagnosis of us. And so these are very often found with newborn screening which is very prevalent in the United States but within Europe is still somewhat lacking. And so we're doing a lot of work to help work with the regulators and the various agencies around Europe to bring in newborn screening so these patients can be diagnosed far earlier and receive treatment much more quickly. The orphan drug designation is really, really exciting and in terms of cell and gene therapy um, is an area that's growing very, very rapidly and I think there are a few reasons for this. One, for cell and gene therapies, we're able to, in these initial times, address um, indications that are very often life-threatening and they tend to be affected more by um, orphan diseases and so there are approximately 7,000 orphan diseases around the world and they affect an enormous percentage of the population but because there are so many and they affect so few people most companies and pharma companies haven't really addressed them up until now but with this new type of technology with cell and gene therapy we're able to very often address indications that can't be addressed by small molecules or even large molecules because of the types of changes we can make in ADA skid we're able to make changes to the patient's actual genome and so affect what we hope will be a permanent uh, solution to their, to their disease. Um, and so what we're seeing is that there is a, a big uptick in the number of indications that are being developed for orphan indications and we're seeing that through work that's coming out of the European Medicines Agency that they're looking at the orphan designation and they're looking at the classification of orphan drugs and the similarity related to them and this is currently undergoing review in order to, to work more with cell and gene therapies and be more applicable to them. From the FDA perspective we're also noticing a huge increase in the number of orphan um, indication applications such to the point that the FDA has just announced that they have to increase their review time um, out to 120 days because of the number of applications they're getting. And, and so this in general is a really good thing because more and more products are now being developed for these smaller indications where patients have this absolute very urgent medical need. And so I think it's a really, really good thing. So 
we have a number of challenges uh, that we really relish um, in developing uh, a new supply chain, commercial supply chain for the first uh, approved corrective gene therapy for children, which is Stromvelis. Um, Initially, the therapy is provided in a fresh form to patients and as a result, patients are required to travel to Milan in Italy in order to be treated. Uh, and then they have to stay in Milan for anywhere from three to six months for that therapy. Now, you can imagine if you're not Italian speaking, this can be very challenging for a family and very, very stressful. <clears throat> so in order to get around that and to make the patient's lives easier and the, the lives of their family easier, we're developing a, a new formulation in order to be able to make sure that we make this therapy available to patients in their home countries much, much closer to home. And so there's a lot of development work going on around that at the moment. And then the other area that we're really focusing on is being able to diagnose these, these indications much much earlier and so newborn screening is absolutely critical. This is currently done and rolled out in most United States um, but within Europe it's still not taken off very well and so we're doing a lot of work with regulators and payers and governments in order to try and increase the degree of newborn screening so that we can diagnose these patients earlier and ensure they get treated much much sooner. So within GSK, we're really excited about the prospect of cell and gene therapy, and we see cell and gene therapies as a critical pillar uh, and one of the main pillars in the development of products and, and healthcare products for patients. And so we're investing very heavily in not only developing these therapies, but also in developing a platform in order to be able to manufacture them. So from our group, we're currently uh, in the process of finishing up clinical studies um, for two other indications, wiscott aldridge syndrome, or, or WAS, and metachromatic leukodystrophy. And so these two are currently finishing their clinical trials, and we will be aiming to submit them for filing for authorization um, in the coming years. In addition to that, we have a number of other programs that are coming uh, off from our partnership uh, with both the Telethon Institute uh, in uh, Milan and a number of other external collaborators. So we expect to have a number of new therapies coming out uh, to be made available to patients. And our aim really is to build this up as a critical platform capability to be able to make a huge difference to patients' lives in a very unique and new way. So I'm really, really excited about the Facilitate meeting uh, in Berlin. I think it's going to be a superb meeting and I really looking, look forward um, to spending some time um, explaining to people some of the challenges that we faced with developing Stromvelis because being the first product of its kind, um, we really had to do a lot of learning uh, on the hoof, so to speak. And I think we came out with some very important lessons which we'd be very keen to share um, with other people in the space. I think. Also having the chance to meet with a number of other companies and investigators and share knowledge with them, learn from them and perhaps figure out ways to collaborate in the future. And at the end of the day, we're all there to be able to make therapies available to these patients. And if we all work together, I think we'll do a much, much better job. So I'm really looking forward to meeting and discussing and learning from lots of people.